This time I'm in this video, we are looking at evaporation and transpiration. So first of all, we need to know about the stomata, as the stomata on the leaves can be opened and closed by the guard cells. Now the stomata are all over the leaf surface, and they control the intake of carbon dioxide and the removal of oxygen by diffusion. So this does allow the plant to take in carbon dioxide, however plants also lose water vapour as well. Now this loss of water is called evaporation, and this constantly occurs in the leaves. Now this is called transpiration. So as the water evaporates from the leaves, more water is pulled through the xylem from the roots. Now this moves to the leaves and is then lost in transpiration, and this process will continue. Now this is known as the transpiration stream. Now it is driven by the evaporation through the leaves, and therefore anything that affects the rate of evaporation will also affect the rate of transpiration. So next we need to look at the effect on the environment on transpiration. So anything that affects the rate of photosynthesis will also affect the rate of transpiration. This is because when there is more carbon dioxide available, more water is lost through the stomata because it is receiving this carbon dioxide. Now the perfect conditions for transpiration are hot, dry and windy. The plants are able to control transpiration as well. So most leaves have a waxy cuticle in order to prevent unnecessary water loss. So for example, in a hot environment, the cuticle will most likely be hot and shiny. Now most of the stomata are also found on the underside of a leaf, which protects them from direct sunlight, and they also have guard cells so that they can close themselves. Now when plants lose more water than the roots can replace it, the whole plant may wilt. So this means that the surface area is greatly reduced so that less exchange can take place. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.